everyone. So about a week ago, I asked you guys on like Facebook and Instagram if you had any questions about living in Korea because uh, I've been going through the quarantine process since I got back here from visiting the States. And quarantine is now over, but I still have a lot of time. So I'm gonna make the video now. I got everybody's questions lined up. I'm gonna go from more like lighthearted, less serious questions to very deep, serious questions. Um, so if you prefer to listen to like the deep, intense stuff, go to the end of the video, but I'm gonna start with kind of the more easygoing, fun questions at the beginning. Okay, the first question, this, I think this is for my mom. Uh, yeah, this is for my mom. What are some of your favorite restaurants and how is eating out different in the, in the US uh, compared to Korea. So Yeah, some of my favorite restaurants here would probably be the Korean barbecue places because I Love Samgyeopsal, which is basically like really thick bacon and you grill it yourself there's um, There's this really really hot grill in the middle of the table and you Put the meat right onto it and so you are in charge of cooking it yourself it's pretty basic the pieces are usually about this big and they're very thick and you put them on the grill you can cut them if you want to uh, it takes just a few minutes to fry them and then you eat them however you like uh, the typical way to eat some gepsal or any Korean barbecue here is there is usually a separate spot for different sauces. They only have a few different types of sauces that you can dip the meat in. Uh, I usually just use salt. Um, they have lettuce, they have onions, they have garlic, they have kimchi. There are lots of different things that you can add to the Korean barbecue. So that would be my favorite thing to eat here. As for the differences with eating out, um, I think the biggest difference is most people in Korea don't like to eat by themselves when they go out, so any anywhere you go, you'll see people eating together. I know that's pretty common in the States too, but I think it's more common for someone to just go out and eat by themselves in the States. Whereas in Korea, they're very community-based and they might feel a little bit awkward going out by themselves or self-conscious. So you'll almost always see people eating with other people. I don't think I've ever seen a Korean eating by themselves when I've been here. Oh, tipping. There's no tipping, which is awesome <laughs> for, from, from this side. Uh, you don't have to worry about adding any extra cost. What you see on the menu is the, the cost of the food. So that's really great. The only other thing I can think of is they also have this really, really awesome handy device on the end of most tables, they'll have this little button that you can press anytime you want to call the waiter over. So you don't have to wait for your waiter to come to you. You can press the button anytime you need something and then they will come over. And I think most restaurants have that button. Most restaurants I've been to have had that button. So it makes ordering and getting stuff taken care of very easy in Korean restaurants. The next question is really similar. It's what are the eating habits like in Korea? They, that really depends on the food that you're eating. They also eat a lot of Western food here. So you'll see people using their hands with like burgers or pizza. Um, they sometimes will use forks and, and knives, but most of the time they, I would say they eat, prefer chopsticks over forks. Uh, I've gotten used to using chopsticks as well here. Actually, I don't own any forks in my apartment. I only have chopsticks and some spoons because I've gotten so used to just using chopsticks. Even for cooking, I cook with the chopsticks. I don't cook with a fork. So yeah, I think the biggest difference with eating habits would be the utensils that they use. Uh, also, the way that the food is prepared a lot of food that we would expect to already be like ready to eat you have to kind of cook it yourself so again like korean barbecue we're used to when you order your food and it gets to your table in the states it's ready to eat but there are a lot of places in korea where you have to do the work like korean barbecue you have to cook your own food a lot of the seafood you have to actually get it out of the shell the one of the bigger differences is 
some of the food, you are actually the one making it and they just bring out the supplies for you. The next question, is it easy to understand everyone? I think that really depends on where you are in the country. I am in Seoul, which is such a major city and it's pretty westernized. A lot of the younger people here around my age, maybe even like late, I would say mid 30s and younger, most people speak English. So it's pretty easy to get around without knowing a lot of Korean, especially if you go to places like McDonald's, um, if you go to really touristy places like a lot of uh, the center city centers like Gangnam and Hongdae, those are very, very touristy areas. So a lot of the people who work in those areas know English. So you could visit on a vacation or holiday and be fine getting around just, just using English. I, I think you could survive with it. Uh, which leads to, to the next question. How much Korean do you need to know to get around? Again, that depends on where you are. Again, in Seoul, there are so many people here that know English. So if you just need to do basic functions like order food at a restaurant or uh, sometimes even asking someone for directions, you could probably find someone who speaks English very quickly and then, and then you'll be good to go. If you go more towards the countryside or outside of Seoul, you will probably have a harder time communicating with people and it will be more more Korean, less English, which I mean it is Korea. It's that's their national language. So if you are planning to come here, it would be nice to know some Korean. I know I I definitely need to do a better job of learning Korean while living here. I right now I only know survival Korean. So I can order at a restaurant, I can ask for directions, I could say really simple things like, how are you? Or um, like, are you hungry? Are you tired? Really, really basic things. So I definitely need, I need to work more on my Korean skills, but living in Seoul, it's really hard to find the motivation for that because most people know English. Even if they don't know a lot of English, they will do their best to help you and you can use translator tools when I went to go get my phone plan this year, um, I walked into a couple different phone places just asking um, which means do you speak English? And the third place I went to, the guy said, yes, enough to help you. And we were able to work together with my very, very, very limited Korean and his uh, basic English. We were able to figure out a phone plan. So even something like getting a phone plan, if you don't know Korean, you'll probably be able to find someone who knows enough English to help you. The next question, what are three culture differences in Korea? Again, I think this depends on where you are. Since I am in Seoul and it's kind of a major city that's pretty westernized, there isn't a whole lot of differences that I've noticed. Um, probably, I think the education system is one of the big differences though, uh, especially as a teacher here. I, I've noticed a lot of the culture differences in the way they expect students to learn and the pressure that is put on students. The pressure put on these students is so great compared to uh, what children experience in the States. A lot of kids, I'm talking like elementary students, they will go to school and then once their day school is finished, they'll go to maybe one or two or three academies that are about different subjects. So like Monday they might have English Academy, Tuesday they might have Math Academy. Wednesday, they might have swimming academy. They have so many classes, a lot of the students don't finish until maybe 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock. Then they have to do their homework and study. And then they go to bed and wake up at like 6 in the morning to start it all over again. So I really feel for the students here because it is a very stressful life growing up here as a student. Um, Korea, unfortunately, has one of, if not the highest, suicide rate. Uh, in in the world and I think a lot of that comes from this pressure to succeed in everything that they do in life have a successful job uh, be successful in school marry someone who's successful that's one of the main reasons why I feel drawn to teach in Asia uh, is to be able to be someone to tell these students that their value does not come from 
their success in life. Uh, they have value regardless of that and that they should feel good about themselves and feel loved uh, regardless of how well they do in school. But yeah, unfortunately, school life for students is really, really stressful compared to students in the States. Kind of going off of that, like dating culture for younger Koreans, I think up until like the end of high school, a lot of parents don't want their children to date until they pass all of their tests or get into a college because they want the focus to be on education. So yeah, education in Korea is such a high priority. Uh, that's definitely one of the bigger culture differences. Um, in the States, it's, I think, becoming more a uh, focus of, you know, do your passion, what are you passionate about, that should be what you go after, which which is great. Uh, I know sometimes that can lead to maybe, maybe people going off and doing nothing, but I think for the most part, that's a lot more better for uh, students' mental health and uh, that parents are a little more understanding with that situation in the States. Another culture difference I've noticed, I don't know if this is a culture difference necessarily, but the prices for things can be different. There are some things that are a lot cheaper than I thought they would be, and there are things that are more expensive. So for example, like a phone charger, I could just go, there's a store called Daiso, which is a five and under store. I can just go get like a phone charger or an HDMI cord, or you can get so many things from Daiso for under $5. Uh, on the other hand, there's a lot of like fruits and vegetables that tend to be more expensive than in the states avocados are so expensive here which makes sense because i don't think they can grow them here so they're exported or imported and to get two avocados it's eight dollars for two avocados so <laughs> i do not get to buy avocados very often because they're crazy expensive uh same thing with like strawberries you would get a whole carton of strawberries for like ten dollars um or bananas uh you're and you're not allowed to separate the fruit here which i didn't know when i first lived here <laughs> so they'll have a whole bundle of like six or twelve bananas together and you can't you can't pull it off you have to buy the whole thing together i'm one person i'm not going to eat i'm not going to be able to eat 12 bananas before they all go bad um, and I don't have an oven, so I can't make banana bread, so I have not purchased any bananas since living here. Um, yeah, the prices for things, some things are cheaper than I thought they would be, some things are more expensive. Uh, so it just depends on what you're looking for and what you're trying to buy. Quick note, something I forgot to mention, one of the really, really cheap things here is healthcare, and it's one of the major, major benefits of living here. And as a teacher here, my healthcare is super awesome. I can go to the doctor and get medicine for about $8. So that is one of the much cheaper things in Korea. The third culture difference, uh, I think it would just be the general diversity or lack thereof in Korea. Uh, Seoul is getting a lot more diverse, but that's because a lot of foreigners come here to teach and to experience Korea. So especially if you go to like Itaewon, that's a big hub for foreigners to live in and to go to for parties and whatever. So Hongdae, Itaewon, um, maybe Jamshil, Gangnam a little bit too, they, you'll find a lot more foreigners in those areas so you won't feel as like you're the only foreigner in Korea. Uh, it's very easy to find other foreigners here, um, but you, you still notice that it's definitely mostly Korean and you'll get a lot of funny questions from your students when you first start teaching. <laughs> One of the most popular questions I get from students is, would you date a Korean? Which to me, it's funny that that's a question because coming from the States, we have so many different nationalities and so much diversity that you don't really think about like, oh, would I date this ethnicity? It's more of, is this person nice? Is this person a good person? Uh, do, do I like spending time with them? But in Korea, they're very, no, I don't want to say everybody, but generally they're pretty superficial and they have a certain idea of what they expect things to be like including relationships. So a lot of the girls, they want to date a very handsome man with a lot of money. And it's good that if he's smart or if he's funny, but the most important thing is that he's handsome. 
same thing for guys. Most guys care more about the girl being pretty or attractive rather than her being a good person or being fun to be around. I've even asked this to my students. I asked them if they would prefer to have someone who is really, really good looking but really boring or really mean versus someone who is average looking but very fun and enjoyable to be around. And 90% of my class chose the person who is very good looking but with a terrible personality. So again, uh, I think a big culture difference there is just, um, I guess that's kind of two separate things. The diversity uh, or lack of diversity in ethnicity here and what's, what people value in terms of relationships. Okay, getting towards the end, one of the more relevant questions for the year 2020 is how is life in Korea with COVID? So if you had asked me this probably two or three weeks ago, I would have said, oh, things are great in Korea. Uh, Korea is doing awesome. There aren't many changes. You just have to wear your mask everywhere, but everything's open. You can still do everything. However, recently a second wave has come, so unfortunately they have had to start to do um, lockdown procedures. So for example, my school and a lot of the other academies, they have had to go on lockdown and they have had to stop meeting in person and only do online classes. So we've been doing online classes uh, this past week. I'm really, really, really hoping that that finishes up next week and that we can actually meet in person because online classes suck. I think any teacher can agree with me, teaching online is not the same as teaching in person. So I'm really hoping that that passes. Um, it's also, it's just kind of strange having so much more like social distancing rules implemented. Um, like restaurants are not allowing many people to actually stay in the restaurant, so you have to just take your food and go. I don't know how public transportation is right now because I haven't had to use it um, since I've been back. But overall, uh, again, like a month ago, everything here was fine. Everything was open. It seemed normal, uh, but now now things have gotten a little bit worse. Uh, so yeah, the, the situation, I would say they're still handling it well though. Um, you have to sign in every restaurant you go to. You sign in either with a barcode app that everyone has on their phone or just writing your like your phone number and your name and the date and the time that you were there. So if something does happen, they can contact you um, or if you find out that you got tested positive, they will know where you went and they can contact those places. So again, I think they're doing a good job managing it. I just really hope that things settle down. I think everyone is hoping that around the world. So I know I'm not alone in that, uh, but yeah, hopefully people are just staying safe and making sure that they are taking care of the people around them and being cautious. All right, I have two questions left. This next question is a very personal question for myself. Uh, this was from my uncle and to summarize, he basically asked, is this what you expected your life to be like 10 years ago? And the answer is a very, very sure no. I was not, not ever planning to teach in Asia. My goal uh, after college was to graduate with a bachelor's degree in art education and then teach art somewhere in the States. But of course, that is not what I'm doing now. Uh, my senior year of college, the summer before my senior year, I took a mission trip to China teaching English there and that's kind of what changed everything. So I ended up finding out about Korea because I, I was initially going to go to China, but then I had friends who had who said they had friends who taught in Korea and they loved it. And then I started to look up information about Korea and it looked awesome. So I decided to come here instead. I taught here for a year. That was awesome. It was great. Uh, and then I got the opportunity to teach in China. Um, that was interesting. <laughs> um, the job, I really liked my job in China, but China was just not for me. Um, so now I know that <laughs> and it was still like a life-changing learning experience, but I don't think I'm going to go back to China. I do really, really love Korea, so obviously I love it enough to come back here for another year. Um, not sure how long I'm going to stay here, but I really enjoy it. My job is amazing here. Living here is super easy, even with the pandemic. Um, healthcare is really great and cheap and it's easy to get around. It's easy to get an apartment as a teacher. 
and there are just a lot of benefits to staying here as, a, as an English teacher and um, teaching is my passion so if I can travel the world and get to experience other cultures while doing what I feel is my calling then of course I'm gonna take that opportunity. Okay, the last question, this is probably the heaviest question. What is the spiritual climate like here compared to the States? I'll try my best to answer. I don't think I'm the most qualified to answer since I haven't spent my whole life here uh, and I, I've really only seen English speaking churches since English is my uh, only language and need to learn Korean. But yeah, I, uh, I've noticed that the younger generation seems to be less religious in general than the older generations. Uh, from what I found online, about 30% of the population would be Christian. I think that includes Catholicism. And then 30% 30, 30 would be Buddhist. Uh, and then there, there's like 10% that's like spiritual. And then everything else is just kind of either like random other stuff or nothing. So it's a little different. Uh, I think the spiritual sense, I, I would say a lot of the population is more superstitious than spiritual, if that makes sense. A lot of Koreans, uh, I don't know how seriously they take these things, but it's very popular for parents to go to a fortune teller and they'll take, for example, they'll take the birth date of their child and their child's fiance or their child's boyfriend or girlfriend and they'll see what their future looks like, uh, the fortune teller will tell them what their future will look like based on their birthdays. If they, same thing with school, they might go to a fortune teller to find out how their kid is going to do in school, or they'll pay to get little talismans or something to do better in school. That's not everybody, but I have heard that that's pretty common. Um, they have a lot of other little superstitions, like your bed needs to be at a certain position. One of, if your head is facing a certain direction, then ghosts can get to you. That's another common superstition. You shouldn't clip your toenails or your fingernails at night because that also invites ghosts, something like that. It's a lot of little random things, uh, but I would say as far as like true faith, I don't think a lot of people here have really deep faith in either Christianity or Buddhism or whatever it is they believe in. A lot of it is just they grew up with it or it's like a culture thing or a family thing. So, uh, and then on the other hand, there are people who are very extreme and very uh, charismatic, which uh, I think some of you have maybe seen in the news, what, what has come from that. So it's very case by case. Um, Again, I'm not an expert in this area or for this question, so I probably did a really bad job answering it, but that's just what I have seen from living here and from what my friends have told me. Um, it's it's very different. Uh, I have been fortunate enough to find, I found a couple of English speaking churches that I really like. So there are good options here um, if you are looking for a solid church in Korea, they do have options, um, if, at least in my opinion. But it is, it's very different compared to Korean churches. Korean churches are very, I've heard generally, Korean churches are very like legalistic and they're very traditional and they have certain expectations for their members and if you don't follow those expectations, there could be like drama or it could be uncomfortable. I don't know. Again, I haven't, I haven't experienced it personally. This is just from what I've heard from other people. Uh, but yeah, generally the spiritual climate here, uh, like like every country or every city, it, it's going to be different just depending on who you're talking to, where where you're at, um, the age group. So yeah, it's, it's definitely different compared to America in the sense that there are still a lot of people who believe in spiritual things, whereas I think America has gone a lot more towards like the atheist or agnostic route. Um, but again, there are still definitely some solid church options here. Okay, those are all of the questions that I got this time. Uh, I talked about a lot of random stuff, I think, too, in there, so <laughs> I don't know if this was helpful at all or interesting. If you guys have any more questions, you can ask me. Uh, yeah, this is just a quick thing that I wanted to do today. So, I hope you enjoyed it. 
if you have any questions, again, you can put them in the comments or message me and I'll try to answer them. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe doing a video about just specifically what it's like teaching here or getting a job teaching in Korea. So if that's something that you would be interested in, let me know. And yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Because <laughs> I know you're going to be trouble. Okay. Calm down.